Let's quickly talk about transitioning from uh, S corporation to partnership. What are the tax implications here? So the thing here is that when we talk about this sort of uh, transition, here is a synopsis you need to pay attention to. First of all, you need to understand that an S corporation is a federal affair, while a partnership is a state affair. In other words, S corporation is, uh, is an election that you do with the IRS, whereas a partnership is actually a type of legal entity, the legal entity that you actually form at the uh, state level. Okay, this is really important to, re to remember that. And when we talk about uh, the, uh, the fiscal impact from transitioning from S corporation to partnership, you have two things. First of all, you have uh, the, the forms you file with the IRS. So if you are an S corporation, you file form 1120S. If you are a partnership, you file form 1065. That's number one. Number two, the second uh, implication here is that basically you might actually be exempt from, uh, let's say, self-employment in one in, in, in one category versus another. But in both cases, you have a uh, simple taxation. You have a, a pass-through entity uh, when it comes to taxation. In other words, when you file form 1120S, you're not paying taxes on that form. You pay taxes uh, through uh, the data that you report on Schedule K-1 when you file your form, 10, your form 1040 Schedule C. It's the same thing that happens when you file a Form 1065. Form 1065 is an informational return, okay? It's not, a, it's not like a Form 1120 where you have to pay taxes. You only pay taxes once when you have an, an S corporation or a partnership. It's really important to understand that in, in a partnership, all owners have a stake in the business. A partnership's legal agreement will decide how profits and losses are distributed based on the owner's percentage of ownership and, and ultimately how the assets are distributed if the business sells or fails. This agreement will also outline the following, who owns the business, operational practices, and how to handle disputes. And the, and the thing here is that, again, I want to insist on that. When we talk about a partnership, this is something that, that's, handle, that's handled at the state level Whereas an S corporation, the IRS really scrutinizes the the uh, and the S corporation to make sure that uh, the, the the company is actually complying with the rules in order to benefit from the S corporation sort of tax status. By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. So let's talk about how a partnership is taxed. So a partnership will be taxed according to a taxation method known as pass-through. That, that's what I just explained to you, right? This same method applies to an S corporation as well. This means the profits and losses pass through the company and are distributed to the partners. And this happens in, on something called Form Schedule K-1. So partnership actually file Form 1065 and uh, they actually uh, they, they will actually will allocate the profits and losses on Schedule K-1 to all the partners. The partners' owners are responsible for reporting the profit and losses on their individual tax returns. So what is a partnership agreement? Because when we have a partnership, we automatically must have a partnership agreement. A partnership agreement is the most common method used when setting up the roles, obligations, and terms that the partnership will operate under. The agreement will define and describe in detail profit allocations, partnership roles and responsibilities, among other functions. It's one of those things where you really want to have a clear idea who does what, when, and where. If you do not have a partnership agreement, you are you will actually fall under state law, which could be a little uh, detrimental to uh, the interest of the partner. So it's always, a great, it's always a great idea to have a partnership agreement. While the agreement is not mandatory, if drafted properly, it is a legally binding agreement. That will have legal standing in the event there are disagreements between owners. Whenever you have a, more than one person running a business or running a, anything in this life, you are bound to have problems. We're all humans. It is what it is. So if you are thinking about uh, the tax implications from S corporations to partnerships, the last thing you, you want is to actually uh, insert in this equation the, the tax implications of all the different partners. And God forbid, if you have uh, individual partners, that's fine. But if one of the partners is also another legal entity, that can be a little more complicated because uh, there are partnerships where the partners are not just uh, regular people, like, you know, more, they're not just the uh, individuals, they're also 
moral persons. In other words, they can be other organizations. So it's one of those things where a partnership agreement can be very, very helpful in terms in terms of clarifying the rules of the games. So everybody everybody has a clear idea who does what, who does what. As I said, when and where. If you or if you have any question, please let us know in the comment section, and uh, we'll get back to you. We'll let it. We'll let you know. We can even uh, refer you to some uh, lawyers uh, or some uh, CPAs or some uh, tax accountants locally that can really help you draft a partnership agreement in relationship to uh, the transition from ANS Corporation to partnership. Boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about transitioning from ANS Corporation to partnership. What are the tax implications? Now let's talk about how to change your partnership. There, there could be cases where you, you can try to uh, transition from S corporation to partnership and the transition doesn't really happen seamlessly. So you, you are forced back to uh, go from a partnership to actually uh, go from partnership to S corporation. Okay. So the first step from, for an S corporation to take in order to change to a partnership involves the owners having to dissolve the company. So if you, the owners of the S corporation must actually have uh, must, must formally dissolve the company. So in order to, to dissolve the company, the owners must file an articles of uh, dissolution or a certificate of dissolution with their state government agency. That's what I said earlier when I said an S corporation is a state affair. Okay. And I mean, as, as corporation is a state affair after you actually, uh, uh, a, a, after you actually convert it to a partnership. No, let me just qualify that. So an S corporation becomes a state affair after you actually do the, the conversion. So, because some states do not have the S corporation status. You, you gotta have a, a C corporation before you can convert to an, to an S corporation. So in order to dissolve the company, the owners, as I was saying before, must file an articles of dissolution or a, a certificate of dissolution with their state government agency. So the exact form that is required will vary from jurisdictions to jurisdiction. Before the S corporation is dissolved, Owners may need to get tax clearance. The next step after dissolution is to file the articles of organization with the state government. In addition, there are filing fees to be paid. Furthermore, to set up the new business, the entity will have to file a business name and register the business with the local government, including with the tax, and tax authorities. And so these are general startup rules and each day will vary in what is required. One thing I want to say, I want to be clear about here is that you want to constantly sort of register with uh, with revenue authorities so you are clear as to uh, the uh, tax the tax obligations of the new partnership entity let's quickly talk about the advantages of an s corporation here so there are a few advantages worth noting when it comes to running an s corporation as opposed to a partnership. So in a corporation, if the company is sued or financially fails, the owner's assets are not touched to pay the debts. In a partnership, all the partners will be held liable. As corporations also have the option to raise capital by offering a class of stock, while a partnership must rely on contributions, loans, or angel investors to raise the capital. Furthermore, the ability of an S corporation to sell both voting and non-voting shares helps mitigate any loss of control when if new members join the S corporation. So this is really important and those have uh, have tax implications. So those are the advantages of an, of an S corporation. What are the advantages of a partnership? There are advantages to operating a partnership as well. S corporation are limited, uh, S corporations are limited to 100 shareholders, which means you can only send a, a maximum of 100 schedules K1 every single year. So when you file form 1120S, you can only send 100 maximum Schedule K-1. So S corporations are limited, they are limited to uh, 100 shareholders, while a partnership can have an unlimited amount of owners. In addition, a partnership is not mandated to hold annual meetings, record minutes, or keep financial records to the extent that an S corporation is required. So depending on, on the states in which you live, Partnerships are often exempt from paying some of the same types of taxes imposed on S corporations. 
The flexibility to allocate income and losses to its members is another advantage. And uh, S Corporation must allocate on a per share, per day basis. So it's one of those things where, so when we talk about income, we are automatically thinking about what? A tax, sort of a, a tax implication here. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about transitioning from S Corporation to a partnership. What are the tax implications? Let's quickly talk about uh, a very important question that a lot of our viewers have, have asked us. Can, a, can an S Corporation switch to a partnership? Yes, the answer is yes. The, 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 the short answer is yes. Now, here is a long answer. Having either an S Corporation status or a partnership status can allow a company to save money on taxes. So rather than the business paying income tax, the shareholders or partners often receive all profits and then pay taxes on them as individuals, right? That's what we call pass-through taxation. An S Corporation can become a partnership and vice versa. So it's one of those things where th th you have to really know exactly what works for, for you. The, the thing here is that when we talk about uh, the, uh, the advantages, you gotta, have a you gotta have a vision first. So what is your goal? What is your vision? What are you trying to achieve by switching from S Corporation to partnership? Is it, is it you're trying to minimize taxes? Is it because you're trying to raise more money? Is it because you're trying to really ease the uh, operational, uh, I would say, heaviness, like the, the bureaucracy that you that comes with the S Corporation, and yeah, you just love uh, the flexibility that really is in, inherent in a, in a partnership? What are you trying to achieve? It's really important to have a clear idea of uh, what you're trying to achieve before doing before doing the switch. So when we talk about tax implications, besides besides the um, the form, the tax form you need to file. You need to also think about the Schedule K-1, but also things like uh, quarterly tax payments, self-employment, okay, FICA taxes, unemployment, all those kind of stuff. And one thing I also need to see here is that depending upon the, the, the business that you have, you might have to pay for excise taxes and in some cases, sales taxes as well, unless you are exempt from sales tax in your area. And it's one of those things where I think we, we have covered this on other shows when we talk about nexus. Okay. Anytime we, we talk about sales tax, we have to talk about nexus. And again, depending upon uh, the situation that you, you have in terms of transitioning from S corporation to partnership, nexus might actually apply. And I'm not even talking about actually uh, switching from S corporation to partnership from one state to another. This, this could be uh, even more complicated, not, not complicated, but we, we don't have time to talk about that today. But uh, that possibility is also is also in the equation. Let me give you a bonus here. So let's talk about uh, moving assets from an, from an S corporation to a partnership. OK, so from an income tax perspective, business owners often view uh, S corporations and partnerships as fungible forms of doing business. Although both entities generally avoid an, an entity uh, level tax by passing through their income to their owners, partnerships often have uh, significant advantages over S corporations. Assuming that a taxpayer can otherwise choose between the two types of entities, some of the potential benefits of using a partnership and other entities that uh, can be treated as partnerships for tax purposes, such as LLCs, includes the following. So, Partnership may generally distribute appreciated property to its partners without again recognition with respect to such property. But outside of narrow circumstances, an S corporation will trigger gain upon the distribution of appreciated property to its shareholders. A partnership's partner include the debt of the partnership in determining their basis in their partnership. This can, for instance, help the partners benefit from any losses incurred by the partnership but an S corporation shareholder can only obtain a similar benefits if the shareholder makes a direct loan to the corporation. And upon the sale or exchange, or exchange of a partnership interest or the death of a partner, unfortunately, a transferee of the partnership interest can receive a step up, it's called a step up, in the basis of uh, the partnership's appreciated assets. But no similar election is permitted with respect to an S corporation. 
Another important benefit here is that a partnership is permitted significant flexibility in allocating its income and losses among its partners, but an S corporation must allocate its uh, income and loss equally across each of uh, its shares. So it's one of those things where you have to understand. Given this and other advantages of doing business through a partnership, one question business owners have is whether an S corporation can convert to a partnership. Unfortunately, a simple conversion of an S corporation to a partnership will be considered a taxable liquidation of the S corporation, resulting in the recognition of gain on the corporation's appreciated assets. Accordingly, such a conversion is generally not advisable. Now let's talk about migrating assets from an S corporation to a partnership. So while a simple conversion of an S corporation to a partnership may not be advisable, it's possible for an S corporation to migrate its assets into a partnership over time. And one way to accomplish this migration without recognizing gains is to transfer the S corporation's assets in a transaction that qualifies as a reorganization for federal income tax purposes and contribute new capital to the business. For instance, let's assume that the stock of an existing S corporation, Corporation X for that matter, has a value of $80 and that the owners of Corporation X desire to migrate into a partnership structure. This could be done using the, using the following steps. So step number one, the owners of Corporation X form a new corporation, Corporation Y for instance, which, which will be treated as an, S, as an S corporation, and Corporation Y forms a new limited liability company new ALC. Corporation X then merges with and into new ALC, with new ALC surviving the, mer the merger and the owners of Corporation X receiving solely shares of Corporation Y stock in the merger. After the merger, the owners hold all the Corporation's Y stock, Corporation Y holds all the units of new ALC, and new ALC holds all the assets formerly held by Corporation X. Immediately following the merger, the owners contribute $20 in cash to the new to new LLC equal to 20% of the value of new LLC as measured after the contribution. And in exchange for such cash, new LLC issues to the owners all the ordinary units of uh, new LLC. So after the $20 contribution, new LLC is considered a partnership for tax purposes. And at the same time, and this is kind of important, all the new LLC units held by Corporation Y are converted to preferred units which entitled Corporation Y to a fixed annual preferred distribution from new LLC. And the preferred units have a value of $80, that is the value of the Corporation X stock before the transaction were undertaken, which equates to 80% of the equity in new LLC. So assuming there is a good business purpose for the merger of Corporation X into new LLC, that transaction should qualify as an F reorganization for income tax purposes. Accordingly, none of the parties to the merger should recognize any gain or loss. So with respect to the $20 capital contribution to new LLC, if the appropriate steps are taken, this transaction may also be ex executed without the recognition of any gain or loss. So this is kind of important. So after the dust settles, the owners hold all the stock of Corporation Y and all the ordinary units of new LLC. Corporation Y holds all, the, all of the preferred units in new LLC and new LLC holds all the business assets. So this is really fantastic. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was just talking to you about uh, the tax implication for transi from transitioning from uh, S corporation to partnership. So I give you the synopsis and I give you a bonus in terms of uh, Migration versus conversion. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.